So, but because it is kind of late already, but I, I, I want to start from actually your suggestion, Michael, not to go back also to an action under, right? right. The other day you said, and uh, then, and, uh, then uh, um, and also yet to uh, stay close to the text, which we did last time. So we will look at uh, Heidegger's uh, uh, text again, uh, his uh, interpretation of uh, uh, the Anaximander of fragment, and then uh, move on. And I, I, I hope that I made it clear in the not Gmail that we were also using, right, uh, this, especially uh, Hegel, uh, the first volume of uh, right, the lectures, of uh, lectures on the history of philosophy. Mm -hmm. But basically, so I won't, I don't have to write the, the code. The, the, the name of, of the class again? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> so just, I mean, then I put the name of uh, Anas Minis, and of, you know, although today we don't go from uh, <clears throat> actually Anas Mandel too, because we'll go back to Anas Mandel, okay, so I need to take this out for now, but uh, of course, as we know, they are part of the Milation school. And uh, the uh, part of uh, the larger also Ionian, uh, as uh, Hegel says, school. I wanted to make a few remarks also on the geography of the place. I don't know if this is, uh, you know, I think that that's important because Hegel does that. He has all these details about this. Yeah, he's pretty this smart that way, yeah. He's very smart, also, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we move uh, from this to uh, something, right, which of course is no longer in uh, the Relation school, but still in the Ionian school. School Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, uh, and then uh, Xenophanes School. <coughs> uh, I said actually, Tony, right? Because you asked me, and I said, Yeah. And I said, Yeah, I mean, this especially, and then touch on uh, Xenophanes, although the, the way in which uh, Hegel uh, deals with Xenophanes is very interesting. I mean, Xenophanes is uh, from uh, the Eleatic School, okay? I would say uh, more. Uh, so this is, uh, a, a, you know, about which we will speak a lot later with Parmenides uh, and Zeno. By right, Eleatic, uh, that comes from uh, uh, Eleas, a city uh, which is actually today is called Velia, B-E-L-I-A, but uh, it was in the past, right, um, a city, I mean, it's uh, south of Naples, right, I mean, uh, in the, uh, so that's where Parmenides uh, lived and so on. Uh, Xenophanes, I, maybe I start, you know, the other way around, I start from Xenophanes, just briefly a few remarks about the life and uh, also maybe the geography, right? I mean, uh, he was born in uh, uh, Colophon, in uh, Asia Minor, and then he moved to Italy as well. Uh, basically, that's the colonized uh, areas of, uh, right, uh, the time, I mean, uh, uh, so I, I did say this at the beginning of the class, right, that, uh, the pre-Socratic tradition, right, starts and uh, develops uh, and everybody flourishes, as they say, outside of uh, Greece proper. I mean, it is only Anax uh, Anaxagoras who then uh, is uh, in uh, Athens, right? But uh, the Milation School, we spoke about that before, right? I mean, they are part of the Milation School. And they are <coughs> in Miletus, right, of Miletus, uh, and of course, when you also take it to this point, okay? So these are the three first philosophers in the Relation School. Uh, and, uh, but that's part of uh, Ionia, the, the geographic region, which is part of uh, Anatolia, which is today is, uh, right, uh, uh, the, uh, in, to, in today's Turkey, right? Anatolia is uh, uh, the, what, the Asian, right, part. I mean, Turkey is between, uh, divided between uh, Europe and Asia, and uh, of course, uh, most of it is in Asia, even Istanbul is divided today between Europe and Asia, but Anatolia, the region where, you know, the Ionian region, Ionia is also in the city of uh, Miletus, and then uh, Ephesus, where Heraclitus was born, that, that's, that's where really philosophy begins. And then uh, we will also find this uh, Eleatic school in uh, southern Italy, right? I mean, uh, again, uh, Elea. And, uh, so in any case, Pythagoras comes from uh, Samos and then uh, moves to southern Italy as well, and he founds in southern Italy, no, I mean, uh, then there is the Pythagorean school, and then goes into the... Uh, the Mathematica and the right, Tom, right? right the two yes, moments yeah, of the two moments of the school, yeah. right. And, uh, yeah. But it is mainly, this 
city of a proto proton, proton, proton and it's right. still there. It's a city that they, uh, you know, then uh, the, the, the school uh, settles in uh, southern Italy, in Calabria, which is, by the way, no, where I come from. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. very interesting the way these schools split, because on the one hand, you have the theory of number, and then on the other okay. hand, you have the theory of rhythm and sound. Right, But yes, uh, yes, Kursky, yes. Yeah, and you yes, also yes. have the mathematics. Right. The right. two law boys that split right. from uh, Pythagoras. Very, very interesting. Right. Sound and number, and, yeah. you know, proportion, yeah. etc. Yeah, mathematical one, I understood the word the most one. influential yeah. in school right. after yes. Pythagoras. <coughs> right. Yeah, and we will see the way in which uh, Hegel actually treats about this in a very interesting, critical yes. way, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, right. about the question of uh, numbers as well, okay? So, but in any case, this is uh, basically, again, the geography where we are, right, I mean, so, uh, Miletos in uh, uh, Anatolia, in Asia Minor, in what today is Turkey, Pythagoras, Samos, but then uh, Southern Italy, okay? Remember that uh, th this is important because that's where the, the Pythagorean school then uh, flourishes. And uh, Pythagoras dies in uh, Southern Italy, but not in what today is in Calabria, but in a city, Metaponto, Metapontum, which is uh, in, uh, Basilicata, you know, between uh, Campania and uh, Calabria. But in any case, uh, uh, Xenophon is uh, born in uh, Colophon in Asia Minor, then he goes also to southern Italy and lives in Messina and Catania. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, you know, yeah. Patricia Curl in her map has Xenophonese in the um, Ionian school, and she, she doesn't put him down in the in oh. Italian. Patricia Curl here in the timeline. Right. She has some part of a continuation of Ionia, right. not in the Italian Sicily right. area. So she puts him here in the Ionian uh, okay. uh, place, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's interesting because yeah. I was yeah. also uh, right. wondering about that because uh, uh, Hegel puts him in uh, the uh, Eleatic school, although, right. of course, he says that uh, he was not from Elea, but uh, right. that, uh, in terms of philosophy, there is this uh, continuity between Xenophanes and then Parmenides. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he has a greater appreciation of uh, Xenophanes, Hegel, than, uh, than uh, the Pythagoreans, or even, uh, you know, even uh, the, uh, the, the Miletians. I mean, uh, Hegel looks at Anaximander in a completely way from uh, right, what we saw last time with Heidegger. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah kind of almost dismissed it. Yeah, very exactly. minor very philosopher right, right, in the right. history and of and Greece and Rabbi. And that's a man. That's a because of the indeterminacy of uh, right. the apparel, and of course, because of Hegel's emphasis on uh, determination. Determination. Right. Then, uh, uh, he says, yeah. the stim, right. Yeah. So he says that is not uh, is, uh, yeah. because uh, they are uh, ideas, uh, I think that at one point he calls them. Uh, Poor abstractions, yes. uh, right? Uh, which is the case also with numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Numbers also are, uh, you know, dismissed in the, the theory that philosophy of numbers uh, uh, is certainly also criticized, and um, the abstraction becomes for Hegel then more uh, 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 profound, if you will, and more uh, adequate, uh, precisely with Xenophanes and then uh, Parmenides, and actually I wanted to say because usually, you know, that's the question, like uh, Patricia Curl, she has Heraclitus before Parmenides, right? Xenophanes, precisely then Heraclitus, Parmenides. Right. Whereas in Hegel you find uh, precisely the treatment of uh, uh, Xenophanes, Parmenides, and then uh, he goes into Heraclitus, and he, of course, he gives much more space to Heraclitus. But, uh, so I would stick to what I, said in uh, the description of, uh, you know, in the, 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 the course outline and follow Patricia Kurt and so next time we will do Heraclitus and then go back to Parmenides. Um, although, you know, the way uh, Hegel does this uh, is interesting too and what's interesting is that uh, in saying that the abstraction becomes more uh, adequate, let's say with uh, the Eleatic school in general, I mean, it's again Xenophanes, Parmenides, Zeno especially, he uh, emphasizes the importance of Zeno, uh, who is uh, a, a student of uh, uh, Parmenides. But he calls this already the beginning of uh, the dialectic, which then uh, will become actually Heraclitus' uh, thing, right? I mean, and Hegel 
all those Heraclitus and not Parmenides. But he says very interestingly that with Parmenides we have uh, also, and uh, that's interesting because, you know, uh, if I may interject here also this uh, uh, um, remark, you know, the question of uh, metaphysics versus dialectics, right, the question of uh, therefore Parmenides versus Heraclitus, permanence versus change, can be also understood differently. And uh, even John Burnett, that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I said maybe we'll, uh, we can't do, there is already so much material, but he also looks at Parmenides in uh, a similar way. I mean, Parmenides at times is seen, uh, right, so the main uh, person of uh, the, the Eleatic school that we will do, will uh, uh, examine in two weeks, right? Uh, at times he's seen as uh, the father of, uh, I don't know, idealism and uh, metaphysics uh, in uh, the most traditional sense, but also uh, by, you know, other times as the father of uh, materialism and uh, also and the father of logical say, contradiction. Right, right, yes, and uh, we'll talk really about that question of logic, is, right, yeah, but it is, yeah, uh, it is yeah. uh, certainly, uh, Hegel says, a more adequate treatment of uh, whatever then uh, Hegel would call right. the notion and so on. Okay, so, but I, I wanted to say a few things about, I don't know if there are other things uh, that we may uh, say to uh, also uh, clarify the question of the, which, which is interesting too, right? I mean, the movement of uh, Greek, the beginning of Greek philosophy, the, in any case, by the way, there is, uh, I mean, as we all know, I mean, uh, when uh, Black Athena you know, was published uh, by Martin Bernard, right, the <coughs> idea that uh, whatever we know is uh, that <coughs> so much for the cradle of uh, Western civilization is actually something that comes right to Greece uh, via also North Africa. <coughs> so, I mean, uh, the and actually, Martin Bernard in uh, Black Athena, uh, he speaks of this very interesting uh, idea of uh, also continental chauvinism, uh, right? Because he well, he calls it uh, Germany's tyranny over Greece, right? It's the revised ancient model that right, educates yeah, right. both Hegel and Marx. He has, uh, has models that are going out because right. at one level, the attack is upon the reductionistic reading of Hegel that leads right. to the Nazi state, right? right and of right. course, you know, which was part of an ancient model, but it was not the revised ancient model, and then Marx, yeah, Hegel, yeah, and right. others were all educated as Freud and, you know, and all of 19th century uh, German mm -hmm. thought comes out of this revised ancient model. <coughs> you know, Greece, mo modern Greece is an invention of Germany. Right, right, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Hegel said yeah. he wants to do what Luther did for the Bible, right, to right. make it speak German, he wants to do philosophy <coughs> when he did speak German. And the, the Heidegger exactly then picks actually, up yeah. that the real dialogue between philosophy is the ancient Greek and the German language. Right, right. That's why the other day, so. speaking about Heidegger and the Greeks, yeah. I said whatever that means. So, right? I mean, I'm like, what's the, the emphasis of uh, What's this book you? It's called, called Black, Black Athena. Athena. Black it's Athena. in the three volumes. He has a linguistic evidence. Yeah. His claim, his major claim, is yeah. a linguistic claim in which the. Um, says, Semitic vocabulary mm -hmm. is much more present in the Greek language than originally scholars had, uh, you know, in interpreted, and that really this is filtered through a movement from North Africa right. through the Greeks, and then through, yeah. Greek, and then through uh, Greek, etc. Uh, uh, so he yeah. traces this so going right. forward, and then offers linguistic evidence to that extent. Okay. Now right. this was a book that created an enormous controversy. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it first came out, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. it is, of course, the Afro Asiatic roots uh, of, of uh, yeah. right. the yeah. publication of ancient yeah. Greece yeah. is the value, the, no, the first value of the time. Yes. Yes. The publication of ancient Greece that begins in the 18th right. uh, century, late 18th and, also, and early 19th. Right, right, and yeah. Hegel is one of the culminations. Mm -hmm. This reading that Bruno sent out by PDF is, is a perfect example of this, right, too. Right. Yeah. And it is, of course, also related to not the thesis of uh, by. Edward said, uh, you know, the end of the Yeah, I mean, you know, he based, he based a lot of this on a little book called Stol Stol Stolen Legacy, mm -hmm. which was a book that talked about the stealing of African philosophy mm -hmm. by the West. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he uses a lot of this as part of his, mm -hmm. his background. But, you know, he's very, you know, it's a yeah, very well yeah, researched. Yeah. And, you know, and he's the son, by the way, of J.D. Bernal, the great. Marxist uh, historian uh, and metallurgist, mm -hmm. uh, who's a historian of science, mm -hmm. you know, science and social action, and a very active member of the British Communist Party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
Right. So, I mean, anyway. again, no, 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 but this is sorry. just a very, very, yeah. very no, important remark. And uh, certainly, yeah. you know, the idea that, uh, uh, so, I mean, even by, even without going into uh, the thesis of a right by La Catena, but simply by looking at the beginning, even by reading uh, Chrysopratic's reader, you see that there is some, right, that uh, when we speak about that's the beginning of uh, the West, Western civilization, that there is something that can't really... Yeah. And actually, the question <coughs> of continents, like he says continental, so I, and I want to say, I just know, yeah, sure. that for example, uh, uh, Sandro Mezzala, that we were speaking about him the other day, mm-hmm. right, uh, you know, and uh, Brett Nelson in uh, Borderless Metal, right, right uh, on the question of the border, but at one point in that book, they also say how continents themselves, not just the nation state, are, you know, uh, also a, an artificial right. entity, I mean, artificial, mm-hmm. right. to be understood yeah. in the I sense mean, of cause. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, going back to uh, uh, Bernal's thesis and also what was happening in, uh, in philosophical uh, deconstruction is that, you know, Danny Dodd's project, in a way, kind of fits with Bernal's thesis, you know, that it was a way of, you know, working through the history of Western philosophy through a deconstructive maneuver that is always privileged the speaking subject instead of the written, and, you know, of course, is looking at the Egyptian presence in, in you know, I mean, right. this is the whole thing of the glyph that he, that he uses. So, grammatology could be read as a term against, if you will, Eurocentric Western philosophy, you know, that, uh, yeah, ultimately is taken, taken off. So, yeah. so, I mean, this is very fruitful in many ways, I mean, because, again, looking at the history of philosophy this way, and, yes. uh, right, opens yeah. up, and, uh, and actually then uh, we will see also, I mean, the question of uh, when we get briefly into Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, uh, and uh, well, what uh, uh, might have been actually the, uh, uh, the influence of, uh, you know, uh, other traditions, non greek the uh, so-called Oriental, and uh, I mean, the fact of uh, the, the travels that they say Pythagoras undertook, I mean, it is uh, not clear where he went, but certainly in, uh, uh, probably he was in Egypt, just like Thales uh, had been, and uh, the, probably uh, the account of uh, Pythagoras going all the way to India is not, uh, uh, is, is not true, I mean, uh, is, but in any case, there was this uh, uh, influence of uh, other, traditions, uh, right, uh, in uh, the philosophy of Pythagoras. I mean, this then uh, comes to, uh, you know, the four, especially with the idea of uh, the transmigration of souls there's in uh, Pythagoras, a, which, in, well, which then uh, gets, I mean, In the history of mathematics, there's a very right. uh, good thinker, Frank Sweck is his name. He wrote a, a piece called The History, uh, excuse me, the uh, Pythagoras, was Pythagoras Chinese, question mark. Oh, because really? a lot of his okay. thinking you know, goes back to Chinese mathematics, and ah, his man okay. Sweat yeah. makes a very mm-hmm. important case about this. Right. And, you know, no, no, but indeed, and and so, but, but, but then uh, that question becomes so simple because then uh, it becomes a prefiguration of uh, some of the things that then uh, uh, will uh, be found in Plato. I mean, uh, uh, that's not only the question of uh, the transmigration of souls, but also maybe more importantly, the theory of form or ideas, right. which relates to the theory of uh, numbers uh, in Pythagoras. And the beginning of the Timaeus, too. Yes. You yes. Greeks yes. are mere children, says yes. the Egyptian Pythagoras. Yes. Yes. And yes. Solon. Yes. And then it's then, a yeah, very yeah. interesting opening comment right, right. in his cosmo- cosmology. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the question of uh, this sort of transmigration of souls, right. even in the Fed, right. right, there is the whole thing right. about the immortality of the soul and so on. So, so in any case, I mean, maybe to go back also because otherwise, uh, uh, you know, to follow more orderly, right? I mean, <laughs> if we go back to Anaximander and then from Anaximander to Anaximenes and we go back to the answer that he gives to the question of uh, the, uh, the arcade. What is it? Aperon, right? Which is this uh, 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 concept, which is still uh, not, uh, um, I mean, uh, it, it is still an element somehow. I mean, it, it, it is not a determinate element, and this is the question that then the problem for Hegel, but it is uh, still uh, in the form of matter somehow, right? But it is uh, indefinite, indeterminate, right? I mean, uh, the boundless. Uh, remember that uh, the, the answer we saw with uh, uh, Thales was to the same question, the question, what is it, right? 
the bound, boundless apparent with, uh, with uh, Anax Mandel. And with Anax Minis it is still apparent, but this apparent is uh, uh, now determined, uh, and this is what uh, Kegel appreciates more, right, in Anax Minis rather than in Anax Mandel, that it is indefinite, but and uh, it is air. And, uh, and uh, maybe we should actually begin by reading, I don't know if we want to, oh, maybe we want to go back to uh, uh, Heidegger as well uh, in, in relation to Anax Mander, otherwise also with uh, Anax Minis. So which one? Should we maybe read uh, again uh, the great uh, the lines that we uh, engaged us, that we saw last time in uh, the so-called uh, Anax Mander fragment and then move uh, from there? into uh, some of the, the testimonial, right, right. Max Minis. Okay, so this is page 17 for those, uh, this edition, right, it's uh, 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 fragment nine, but uh, again, uh, I will uh, uh, read again uh, the last four lines on page 17, of, uh, right, fragment nine. The things that are perished into the things from which they come to be according to necessity for they pay penalty and retribution to each other for their injustice in accordance with uh, the ordering of uh, time, as he says in rather poetical language. This is simply right? Right. <coughs> Remember that it was Theophrastus who first put this down, uh, Aristotle's uh, student, and then simply uh, much later. So, but, uh, and uh, we saw the wonderful way in which then uh, Heidegger completely uh, re translates this, right? I mean, uh, and especially we spoke uh, about the question of necessity, usage, how, uh, usage uh, right? How, how the concept of necessity becomes usage, and that was on page 57 that he offers the, the translation uh, that, uh, right, uh, that includes also, right? I mean, uh, in terms of usage, uh, this includes the concepts as well of uh, ethos, right? Uh, Michael, you also said that last time, ethos, ethos, right? And mm -hmm. care, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is this question of care uh, that comes also from uh, the idea of uh, esteem. Uh, that he, uh, okay, so he says, along, this is uh, instead of uh, according to <coughs> necessity, along the lines of usage, right? For uh, they let order and thereby also care, right? Right, belong to one another in the surmounting of a disorder. And uh, we saw that he was, uh, also he told us about the word esteem. So I don't know if we want to elaborate on this question also uh, again at uh, the fragment uh, in. Uh, and the question of care, uh, usage, and... Um, oh, okay. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, we, did you ask the question? Oh, yeah, no, I, we, we want to say more, I mean, uh, before uh, moving on to, um, uh, to the others, to Anax Minis, the, the question of, uh, the, sorry, thesis, right, which is one of the words in uh, the Greek, in the fragment, the key says it is, uh, uh, this is page 45, okay, that uh, uh, in the middle of page 45, uh, speaking about thesis, which is usually translated, no, right, with penalty, and he says, uh, surely thesis can mean penalty, but it must not, because the original and essential significance of the word is not there by name, for uh, thesis is uh, esteem, and then he says, uh, right, Heidegger says, to esteem, something means to hit it and so to take a satisfactory care of uh, what is uh, estimable in it, okay? And so then uh, the question of care comes already appears here and then uh, in uh, the translation, okay, because uh, in the translation on uh, page 57 we saw, and, and by the way, to esteem, I just happened to see today, looking at some passages from, uh, no? From uh, Nietzsche, uh, from uh, Nietzsche's uh, spoke Zaratustra, that he says to esteem, and Nietzsche says is to create, which is also an interesting. Hmm. Right. I mean, I think the interesting thing about the retranslation is to get it away from the, the Roman appropriation the Latin makes <coughs> in Heidegger's case, mm -hmm. right? Because he's really trying to look for, you know, non-representational thinking 
back in the Adamax or you know our context. Yeah. And this is this is something that really is part of the Heideggerian move always to do this, you know, yeah. and just to think of energy as presency rather than the way the Romans have done this as reality or as you know effective yes. reality, the Berkeley type or the notion of objectivity. Right. So this I think this is important to keep in mind that Heidegger is really looking at this pre-Socratic moment, and particularly in the Anaximander fragment, as a, as a, as a move to stay out of, of, of representational things. Yeah, right. Well, you know, the, really this closure of Western metaphysics that he Absolutely. thinks happens with Hegel mm -hmm. is still trapped within that. That's right. the closure. So this is now this attempt to have this right. thinking, poetizing dialogue with the, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way it's right? uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. also yeah. Yeah. Well, no, just the way it's the way it's uh, phrased here in the Simplicious, uh, through Simplicious and then translated here, it does sort of sound like just something that just it just happens, right? And it doesn't even require human intervention whatsoever, right? It just sounds like this is how it is. Things are, they perish into what, uh, what does it say, into the things out of which they come to be according to necessity. And the sort of change there to... That's where he changes it to care. Yeah, or like she has uh, changes to structuring order. Right, but which, there's the uh, question of this care. Thing of this, uh, yeah. Yeah, is one care. that requires yeah. sort of this sort of uh, stewardship or like human sort of whatever yeah. touch or shepherding, right? Right. That which I is, think. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Which is also the presencing that we saw the other yeah. day. Michael was also reminding us of it that. Uh, it is that of the logos. It's a reinterpretation. I mean, for mm -hmm. Heidegger, always over the version of uh, logos, which then, of course, in here mm -hmm. is the notion. But logos is uh, the gathering, which is mm -hmm. really uh, very important. I mean, for me, particularly important because I'm also working with the concept of the gathering. But the gathering is logos, right? right Lay in uh, the, the verb, which then uh, it is uh, also included in uh, the mm -hmm. word uh, through the Latin uh, legere. He says that actually the next. Uh, Essay on uh, in that book on uh, Heraclitus, mm -hmm. right, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the notion of the logos, precisely through legere in uh, say intellect uh, in, mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. It is this gathering right. of uh, so it is, yes, I mean, uh, instead of the necessity that we have uh, mm -hmm. before, there is this structuring order order or uh, the ordering mm -hmm. itself of uh, which is not an order in the sense of uh, the uh, command and so on and so forth but it is uh, in the sense of uh, precisely as it says on 57 which uh, uh, has order but also care right belong to one another in the surmounting of a uh, disorder right so it is uh, a coming together of something in uh, the gathering there is a coming together the other day also Michael, you mentioned uh, the police, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I said how in uh, the wonderful not, uh, book on uh, Holderlin's uh, him, this uh, he says how police comes from precisely the pole, mm -hmm. where again uh, there is this gathering, right? So it is uh, there is a relation mm -hmm. between uh, the building also of uh, uh, the human world, the community, the political world, the police, and uh, the logos. Uh, which is uh, a presenting, a coming, actually, if I find it, because I was looking at this, there is uh, uh, one uh, really wonderful uh, um, uh, way of speaking about this, speaking about the gathering. Uh, this is uh, from this book, okay, Only Greek Thinking, which is uh, a co collection of different essays coming from the life, because we said the essay on uh, uh, Anaximander comes from Holzweg, right. right, for example, this one is a different one, I don't know exactly, but, but in, in any case, here he speaks of, uh, on page 63, the presenting of that which lies before us into unconcealment, okay, that's the, the, the movement, if you will, of the logos, the legging, which is the gathering, right, the comes in, uh, I mean, the play of uh, the conceal, of a uh, concealment and unconcealment is always there in uh, uh, Heidegger, right? So, uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to say this, uh, then uh, um, uh, 
Um, I, I don't know, you, you were about to say something? No, no, I'm, I'm just yeah. listening. I mean, I'm trying to yeah, go yeah. a little bit concealed. I mean, no, no, no I mean, I... I mean, the term is Alethea, right? Yeah, Alethea. what he really uh, uses uh, as an right. interpreted principle. Uh, it's it. a way, the alpha privative is a way from structural left -hand. But you're going outside of the left a, you know, in order to understand right. what's going on, what has been concealed mm -hmm. for so long in this. You know, and, and the passage you were reading further down at the end here on page 57, uh, you know, um, is, is very interesting regarding concealment and unconcealment. Yes. In a meta way, man has already begun to overwhelm the entire earth and its atmosphere, you know, which is a nice way of him going back to the pre-Socratics again with earth and air, right, and, and to arrogate to himself in forms of energy the concealed powers of nature, right, mm -hmm. and to submit future history to the planning and ordering of a world government. The same defiant man is utterly at loss simply to say what is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this to me same. is, you know, again, this, this interpretive movement between Concealment and unconcealment. Yeah, that's right. And that, uh, yeah. if I may, because yeah. I found, sorry, because this yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, I'm just saying. But you, yeah. you had that, that book, at least, yeah. but, uh, page 64, yeah. again uh, in uh, the, the essay on uh, Heraclitus, uh, fragment uh, B50, the, uh, on the, lo the Logos. <coughs> he says, this is uh, page 64, line 4 from uh, the top. He says, uh, but the unconcealing, right, that you were speaking about, over the conceal. Right, I mean, the conceal comes to the fore as uh, unconcealed, right? That there is this movement in my title, there's this uh, revealing uh, type of uh, movement, right? So the unconcealing of the concealed into unconcealment is the very presenting of uh, what is present. And this is then, like he says, this is the being of beings, right? Which is one of the most important questions for him. In, uh, also the critique of metaphysics, the being of being, the question of the being of beings is not the question of being, right? I mean, he has this right. twofold question, right, that he speaks about, but there is this uh, coming to presence, which is, uh, again, uh, display of uh, the concealed and the unconcealed. We will see more when we do Heraclitus, because he also speaks about one of the fragments of Heraclitus in this uh, sense, like uh, the nature loves to hide, uh, that very short, uh, right? Or, okay, so we, we'll go back to this. But I in mean, any just, case, just yeah. going back, I mean, just to set it in kind of a, you know, a, a, a frame that gives it a kind of other kind of context. In terms of the Enlightenment, Logos was always translated as reason, right? Right. And it was the reason of the Enlightenment. Hegel, of course, is subjected to this, right, in many ways, as is Freud in a different way. Logos means science, scientific right. reason. Yeah. For Heidegger, as you have said, something very different. And it's good to keep this yeah. in mind yeah, within the history of yeah, you know right. the way we're yeah. interpreting here. Right. You know, that's right. all I just want to point that out. You know, right. it means something very different to the Aufklärung and to German idealism than it does to right. you know, 20th century, you know, middle 20th century interpretation. Right, and that's the relation, precisely the link to language as well and to. Uh, the poetic uh, uh, experience, poetic moment, and uh, yeah, because it is not only, certainly not reason in the sense in which, as you say, was uh, traditionally understood, but uh, discourse, word discourse, and so on and so forth, and then uh, fundamentally this, uh, this uh, wonderful, I believe, uh, way of understanding it as the gathering of uh, yes. something. Which, of course, as you know, set off the Marxists, especially Lukács and others, very much to think of Heidegger as a thinker of the irrational and all of this was a, a return to you uh, know, right. a kind of different form of irrationality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, I is, mean, this is just so that people know and yeah. Adorno and mm -hmm. similar kind of criticisms on a, I think on a higher level, you know, but still speaking through the dialectical mm -hmm. tension of reason and enlightenment, right? And, yeah, that's right. You know, yes. a kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you, you want to say more? No, no, it's okay. I mean, it's a long story. No, no, no. You know, it's, it's yeah, good right, that we, right. you know, kind of, we'll go you know, back to these yeah, questions yeah, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I also wanted to say that, uh, I mean, strangely, there might be uh, important reasons for that. Yeah. But uh, certainly, he doesn't say anything about the question of time, uh, right? Uh, that uh, according to the ordering of time, uh, he, uh, Heidegger doesn't say anything about that. Uh, uh, 
kind of uh, moment of uh, no, the announcement of fragment, right? That uh, right. Uh, whether it's according to necessity or according to usage, uh, but uh, the well, you know, he's I'm going through saying. changes his own way because, of course, he reverses many of the things in being as time, the time becomes being, right? Later yeah, on, he's, he's going through, he's, he's going through, a, a, you know, a shift, if you will, finding right, himself, right. you know, in terms right, of his right. own, own philosophy. This is on the cusp of the letter of human, on humanism as right. well as, yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. the thinking through time as being rather right. than being as time. Yes. You know, which is, there is a difference. Right, I mean, right yeah, but yeah, precisely yeah, because yeah. of his uh, yeah. interest in that, it's uh, not, I mean, uh, uh, remarkable right. in the sense that uh, yeah. he doesn't uh, make any comment uh, right, uh, on, on this. But I wanted to say that the, the, the recent book, uh, the title is uh, The Order of Time, mm -hmm. right, by uh, Carlo Rovelli, mm -hmm. an Italian theoretical physicist, mm -hmm. right, they had the book. Uh, in which precisely Rovelli goes into an expand in a very interesting way as well. And he says, I'm quoting, astronomy and physics have since, this is a very recent book, have since developed by following the seminal lead given by Anaximander. Right. Mm -hmm. By understanding uh, how phenomena occur, he says, according to the order of the ordering of time. Okay, so this is the, the, uh, the theory of theoretical physicist writing right about uh, contemporary questions of physics, but going back to Anaximand, then he says that that's what, you know, set really the tone. It's very interesting, right? And um, so, and uh, he agrees that, uh, you know, ultimately, he, he, because he, he mentions Anaximander at least twice, and he agrees that Anaximander's fragment is uh, precisely about change, so we'll go back to this also when, no, of course, we get into no, Heraclitus as well. Okay. So, in any case, so maybe uh, unless we want to say more about the, uh, uh, Heidegger's uh, interpretation of uh, uh, Anaximander or, uh, you know, uh, Anaximander himself, we can uh, move uh, also into perhaps uh, Anaximenes. And uh, I mean, I have already said how, in a sense, Heidegger. Uh, appreciates uh, Anaximenes more than uh, Anaximander because of uh, the question of determination. Uh, so, but you don't have this one. Uh, Say again? The, the lectures of the headers are okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because uh, he deals with uh, Anaximander uh, on page 185, right through page, uh, uh, sorry, 185 through page 189, and uh, as you said, he said, he almost, right, he dismisses, in a sense, right? No, this is in the lectures on the, it's, uh, it's 185 in the Gutenberg, it's page 96 of the book. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Page 96 in the Gutenberg and 186 in the book. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to share? Yeah, I know. I thought that the pages were the same. But in any case, it says... And maybe we can read some, I mean, there, there, there are so no, many... No, I don't have a copy, go ahead. No, it's okay, I don't know. Yeah? Yeah, okay, okay. No, no worries. Okay. No, at the end of page 185, I don't know. Bruno, before you move on, can I just make one yeah. reference here to something you said earlier that yeah. might deepen when you spoke about gathering just on page 65 of the early Greek thinking on the Heraclitus. I know we're not doing Heraclitus no, yet, no. but there's a very interesting thing about what hearing is for Heidegger oh, yeah. in terms of Heraclitus. Hearing is primarily gathered hearkening. Yeah, very good sentence at page 65. Something we can go back to in yeah, terms yeah. of what the call really means, what uh, the appellative means. Hearing is primary? Yes, primary for Heidegger, yes, yes. Yeah. The gathering of oneself, which composes itself on hearing the pronouncement and its claim. So this right. is very interesting oh, yeah, in the way the of how he hears there. differently than you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's so right. We really have not known how to hear, right? He goes back to this very often, also when I get yes. speaking about Holderlin and he speaks not about the conversation. I mean, those yes. lines by yes. Holderlin, since we had been a conversation right. and had been uh, 
able to hear to one another. Yes. Right, I mean, the question about hearing is very important. Recognition? In, uh, uh, to recognition of the other to hear? Well, right. that's a Hegelian. Right. Right. That's, that's, that's more Hegelian right. than, right. Right. than it's high more than like the conversation, yeah. which is also yeah. in the translation of, uh, of uh, precisely, you know, the Anaximander fragment where he says, uh, belong to one another in uh, the uh, the care and the belonging to one another in the surmounting of a uh, disorder, which is maybe it's not more, it's not it's so much recognition; it's the gathering that really counts. Right, it's right. not so much like the he Hegelian po politics of recognition mm -hmm. or recognition of the other, as we talk a lot today, or how identity politics ultimately takes that up. I think it's much more about the. That's why I brought it up because he's yeah, using yeah. this notion of the gathering. It's a much more interesting, at least to me. Yeah, you know? no, and if yeah. you look at uh, two, I mean, I, I'm sorry to you know go far further with Heidegger, but if you look at the origin of the work of art or or um, um, building dwelling thinking in the fourfold, you know, the gathering is always the most important right. thing exactly. in the fourfold between earth, horizon, you know, mortals and divinities. Right. It's really the gathering. Right. The, the, it's in a, a lot the, of the, the place, the topology, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, topology. Uh, the right. metaphysics uh, right. book right. and on the way to right. language, he right. talks about the gathering right. almost right. in every right. book. Right. Yes. You mean introduction to metaphysics? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's a very different so notion that we're accustomed to in everyday life. Anything has to do also you know, with, with the ordinary, the, or even in ordinary <laughs> philosophical language. With the being with, with uh, has to do with the being with more than simply mm -hmm. the question of recognition. Well, the mid -Zion is really the gathering, yes, right. I think, you know, more than being with another. Right, right. That Sarge yeah. kind of misinterprets yeah. in concrete relations with others. And right, being right. And nothing but, uh, so this right. question of really, uh, the ability, <laughs> yeah. at least, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's part also of this yeah. critique, right. you know, uh, that's also relevant precisely in relation to the pre the relevant, the contemporary relevance of uh, the pre socratics this question of uh, being able to listen, right, uh, and hear, to, uh, I yes. mean, which is something right. that in many ways we have uh, uh, lost, if you will, uh, you know, comes to mind also what uh, Stigler says about the lack of attention, right, mm. which is, uh, uh, if you will, uh, a pathology uh, <laughs> uh, today, I mean, uh, that Stigler says it is because sure. of society. Attention disorder, society. And, uh, deficit disorder, as well as the attention yeah. economy, of which so much of the you know, Silicon Valley preys upon. This is really the, you know, right. new yes. technological yes. capital and their, their, their objects. Right. <laughs> you know, just, you know, and so, and, and, and this attention again uh, comes back right. in these uh, right. uh, no, things that you are talking about in terms of uh, the gathering, but also the question of care, ethos, and so on and so forth. I mean, mm -hmm. it is but very much a question of attention that uh, we uh, are dealing with right. very often in many different ways, yeah. Okay, so in any case, uh, um, I, I think that we may read uh, at least together some of these one, there are wonderful moments, of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, th this is actually a lot, maybe for one night only, because uh, Anaximand, Anax, Anax, actually, Anax Minis, uh, you know, Pythagoras, the Pythagoreans, and Xenophanes, it becomes really a lot. I mean, there, there is so much to, but at the end of page, the bottom of page 185, uh, speaking of uh, Anaximander, in uh, probably, I would say, an un unfair, uh, probably, way, no, I would say, uh, but in any case, uh, he says his philosophical reflections are not comprehensive and uh, do not extend as far as to determination. Right, that's the problem. Bestimu, as you were saying, because that's his, uh, of course, uh, his, his thing, let's say. Okay. So, I mean, the lack of determination becomes really the problem uh, in relation to... And uh, he says, uh, I don't know how I can uh, call attention to the exact uh, place, since, you know, we have different pages. Uh, I think yeah. trying to get them. Just, uh, is it about an X meaning? Yeah, maybe you just say what the paragraph begins with. Sta static of uh, conversational Marxism across the hall. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I want to I'm very bad. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to next minutes, but I say, I don't know, I'd I, I like to call attention to the exact 
Uh, yeah. You know, pass. You don't have it printed up? I have it printed up. No, I printed it. Oh, yeah, but it's printed. An action mm-hmm. printed by uh, what do you need? an action mender. Oh, yeah. I can share with you. Yeah. Yeah. What are we reading? Yeah. What are we looking at? An action mender. Oh, okay. Do we have a table? He said the phone. You come to me? Okay, you want me to move? I, I don't mind moving. You want me to move? Yeah. Is this the only one? Oh, you don't have a table. Okay. Okay. What page? I know not to page one in the center because I want to make sections as well. Here? Page 187. Anaximander removes the individuality of the element of water. His objective principle does not appear to be material and that uh, it may be understood as thought, which then will become important uh, soon. But it is clear that he did not mean anything else than uh, matter. Sorry, Jeff, where are you yeah. just it's uh, oh, page 187. 187. Right? Well, we have an, this is, uh, no, the, yeah. I think that the pages were the same. No, no, this is it. Oh, you're on 187 now? You didn't start with oh, yeah. this thing here? I tried to find one actually. The map? You, you didn't do that? This is the end. Like the you, you want to, no, no, I'm just trying to find out where you are in the book. Oh, I'm on page 187. And is it the advance made by the new German name? Is it infinite? Right. Okay, okay. No, no, no. No, I didn't. 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 I the definite, right, is important, and um, uh, and he says that an ax- at the end of that paragraph, an Axmander does not seem to have said that this is uh, its uh, infinitude. So, um, in any case, he calls this, uh, even at this point, he speaks of a poor determinations, later he will speak about poor abstractions in uh, relation to the the Pythagoreans, I believe, but poor determinations. I know if you see that in the middle of yeah, uh, yeah. the next uh, uh, paragraph, right, that begins with he has said further, and this, in this, according to Theophrastus, he agrees with Anaxagoras, uh, right, uh, then I skip a few lines, and he says so that properly nothing originates, mm-hmm. uh, seeing that it was already there. This, however, he says, right, I mean, what we saw in Anaxman, right, the, the cycle, I mean, the fact that uh, <coughs> things go back into the things from which they came to be, uh, for uh, Hegel, all this uh, is uh, a matter of a poor determination. Okay, so he uh, calls this uh, unsatisfying, basically it is an, an unsatisfying way to speak about this. Okay, so I, I just want to call attention to this. That, like you were saying dismissiveness in the sense of uh, Hegel vis-a-vis Anaximander, and uh, the greater right, uh, uh, praise, if you will, appreciation of Anaximenes because of uh, this determination uh, mode. Okay, so if we go to the, the, the Anaximenes um, section in Hegel, and I can make some uh, you know, notes also from uh, uh, Brunet because, uh, again, I didn't bring the the book, but uh, uh, let's, let's begin with, uh, with uh, Hegel. He says this is the second paragraph in uh, uh, the section on uh, Anaximenes, um, who came, uh, of course, after Anaximander. Uh, and uh, uh, he says, in place of the undetermined uh, matter, right? Uh, you see that on uh, uh, Anaximander, he brings forward a definite. A natural element, uh, hence the uh, absolute is uh, in uh, a real form. Of course, this is Hegel's language <laughs> that we will find over and over again, right? And then um, I uh, so he says that it is uh, the form is air, 
right here, uh, uh, he found that, uh, uh, that for a matter essentials, uh, being was indeed essential, and the air has uh, the additional ad advantage of being more devoid of form. It is less corporeal than water, right? Uh, for we do not see it, but feel uh, it, uh, feel it uh, first in movement. Okay, so I mean, in other words, simplistic words, right? I mean, uh, uh, Anaximander says water is too concrete, too, you know, an element that we find in nature. We need something more indefinite, but then Achilles is indeterminate, the apparent. Uh, Anaximander says, yeah, that's okay. That's better than water, however, we also need uh, something which is indefinite, yes, but uh, determinate, and so air is uh, a better choice, right? Better than water, and uh, better than uh, instead of uh, the um, more uh, generic, indefinite, indeterminate apparel that we saw in an axe right? And uh, so what's important is air, of course, air in uh, Greek, but then uh, there is that wonderful. Uh, uh, fragment uh, passage about an Aksminis that we are going to see, you know, there, there are a few interesting, but one in which also the question of a pneuma, the breath, right, uh, is, uh, the, uh, is uh, also uh, considered, right, I mean, uh, maybe we can read this from uh, now, I mean, uh, an Aksminis, uh, this is uh, uh, passage 21 from uh, the uh, Kurt, Patricia Kurt, the reader, right, 21, uh, sorry, to Anaximenes, like Anaximander, declares, and this is uh, uh, again a Theophrastus, uh, quoted by the way by Simplicius that we saw before, right? Simplicius is the, okay. Mm -hmm. So, Anaximenes, like Anaximander, declares that the underlying nature, and it's interesting now we had this concept, the underlying nature, the, the deeper level, right, which is mm -hmm. still, uh, right, the common substance and the first principle, the arche, mm -hmm. is one and uh, unlimited, apparent, but not indeterminate. That's the problem, okay? That's the way it's uh, an expander held. But it is definite. Saying that it is air, it differs in rarity and density, so with anax minis we also have now these two important uh, uh, concepts, I mean, uh, the two movements of uh, Rarity and uh, uh, density or a, a rarefaction, uh, I think the word rarefaction, 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 rarefaction yeah, and yeah, condensation. Yeah, Jean Bornet right. uses this word, right. I mean, it's, it's an idea. Which then, uh, you know, we will see again. I mean, but it is uh, uh, an advance, one might say, in uh, no, uh, the attempt at explaining uh, how uh, uh, then uh, things come to be, how reality comes to be. Okay, it is a matter of. Uh, Precisely, you know, there are these two forces, these two uh, movements, right? Moments of a rarity and density according to the substances it becomes. It is still air. Becoming finer, right? Uh, it comes to be fire. Being condensed, it comes to be wind, then cloud, and then uh, still further condensed, it becomes water, then earth, then uh, stones, and the rest come to be from this. Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, he too makes motion eternal, like Anaximander did, and uh, says that change also comes to be through it. Of course, motion change. Okay, so this is a, 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 an important uh, passage about uh, uh, Anaximenes. And um, let me read the next one, 22. Just as our soul being air, and then we can talk about this as well, and uh, maybe look at uh, some of the uh, Hegel, uh, right? Uh, Hegel's uh, reading of this that uh, holds us together and controls us. So do breath and the air surround the whole cosmos, right? Now the question is: uh, breath and the air are, uh, and he says that himself, uh, synonyms, mm -hmm. right? And. Uh, um, Air is air, right, in Greek, air, and breath is pneuma. Pneuma. And pneuma. Pneuma. Yeah, it was said pneuma. Pneuma, you say, yes. Which is interesting. Pneumonia. Yeah, pneumonia. The agony of the breath. Right, it is precisely what, you know, the breath, very material, right? I mean. Cold and hot, no? Warm, cold, I think, the breath, and he talks about it. 
also, I mean, I, that may be the variety and density of uh, yes. things, right, that I began, yeah. But it is uh, this breath, which is not only in uh, the human or the living being, right, but also the cosmos, uh, right, as a whole. That's a wonderful passage, right? Just as our soul, and by the way, soul is not to be under, like that's always another problem of a, it's not soul in uh, the tradition typically of a, right, the dominant, uh, say, uh, Tertullian. Uh, mono, uh, uh, Tertullian soul. Yeah, right, right, uh, <laughs> right. And therefore, in the Judeo Christian and the right, tradition, right, it's no. not immaterial, no. right? It right. would be then uh, in the philosophies, uh, I mean, like, well, on Seeking. the one hand Tertullian, on the other hand also Plato, right? right. Uh, and then uh, from Plato, that's the metaphysics, right, that uh, Nietzsche attacks uh, Descartes and so on for Descartes too, right? right. The thinking substance, uh, which is soul slash mind, uh, is uh, immaterial and so on. Here we have something material and it is actually the psyche, I mean psyche, right? Soul in uh, Greek is uh, even the title by Aristotle, right, that usually the book translated with uh, uh, on the soul is very psyche. Psyche. Right, psyche. Psyche. Right. Psyche, yeah. It's like mm -hmm. the psyche, like the psyche, no? Right. Yeah. Psycho so, and this is... Psychology. Psycho uh, psycho psycho right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, because, uh, I mean, uh, I, I can... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have the words here, you want to say? Right. I mean, that's the problem. And interestingly enough, is how that becomes the Latinate anima, uh, which of which we get animal, yeah. right? And we have many, many yes. levels here that we start thinking through. Yeah, to I just want to say the, to do that. Uh, yeah. 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 Anima animus. Anima uh, animus. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, CK. Okay, which is uh, again uh, the, the soul, right? Which is different from uh, otherwise. But but, but that, that's a, if I may, a parenthetical remark, right? That's a general problem, like uh, the, with the translation of, uh, say, Chinese uh, texts. When uh, the missionaries, no, they went to China from uh, Europe, the Christian missionaries, and then uh, when uh, their books were uh, being translated, they started translating, no. The Chinese books and uh, the word Qi, the concept of Qi, which is uh, now very popular as well. Everywhere, Qi is the is vital the energies. The center is uh, vital right, energy. Vital energy, yeah. right, that uh -huh. circulates throughout the body. Mm -hmm. Again, like, uh, like uh, again, mm -hmm. this very material type of uh, mm -hmm. breath. Uh, right. that, that was, again, what is this? It must be the soul, right? I mean, the initial thing was to see that, again, well, to translate, mistranslate that. The physical location the is the core, the themos. Right, right. The, the physical, physical location in the Greek was the themos, yeah. which we call the core yes. today. Mm. Okay. Right? So, but in any case, this is where, very interesting because <laughs> there is this... Uh, uh, Everybody's going to be healthy after this the, class. Yeah, right? yeah. But there is this connection, not, on, not only, again, uh, this uh, idea of the, the interconnection, <coughs> interconnectedness of uh, things, yes. the human being, the living being, and uh, the cosmos, mm -hmm. uh, as a whole, in, uh, in uh, Anaximenes. Uh, but also there is uh, a link between, uh, you know, this tradition and uh, other traditions, right, right. which... Uh, emerged uh, more or less at the same time, that's the Axio, if I pronounce this mm -hmm. word, well, uh, theory, right, thesis by Jaspers, right, that yeah. uh, uh, there was a time in which uh, philosophy started in different areas of the world. Uh, one might say, I mean, it's not that there was necessary connection, but, uh, you know, it's the time of, uh, you know, the emergence of philosophy in uh, the Greek, uh, the, the area, the areas colonized by the Greeks, right? Not only in Greece, I mean, again, Anatolia, southern Italy, but also in China, uh, India, or rather also, you know, the Buddhist tradition that begins in Nepal, with the right. is Nepal. And also other traditions, you know, that uh, uh, we uh, know less about because they cannot be in a, a right, uh, there isn't a, a written record of, uh, I don't know, the traditions of uh, the philosophy in Africa and uh, in other areas of the world as well, right? But uh, um, Jaspers, Karl Jaspers, right, speaks of this, uh, actually he speaks of these paradigmatic figures, no? Right. In, uh, 
philosophy, and I think that the four Socrates, that he mentioned... Socrates, Buddha, Confucius, and Christ, right? And Christ, yes. Uh, and, and he said there may be mm -hmm. more, but yes, this is course, the four, uh, the four, uh, four. paradigmatic uh, belief mm -hmm. as the word. Right, right. So, but in any case, th there is this uh, interesting also link that one can make, right, uh, because it is... Uh, uh, and, and, and this is something new, because we haven't seen probably, in an Axmand, uh, by the way, we skip those moments that I want to simply, you know, uh, highlight briefly, but there are two, because we only focus on one uh, passage, the fragment, right on uh, but uh, there is something interesting as well, because there is, uh, a, a, you know, uh, in an embryonic uh, way, uh, already a theory of uh, evolution, right? Uh, uh, in, uh, I, I don't know if you noticed that in an Axman, uh, right? I mean, I can go back to some of the passages where I know, and then I go back to an Axminis again. But for example, uh, 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 passage uh, 18. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a good one. Ah, you want to read it? <laughs> Uh, Is that chaos? Oh no, the yeah, 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 sorry, the curve again. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, Anaximander said, says that the first animals were produced in moisture, enclosed in thorny barks. When their age advanced, they came out into the drier part, their bark broke off, and they lived a different mode of life for a short time. Right, in 1902, if you want to read that also, it's yeah, sure. the same, same type, but it's beautiful. Uh, he also declares that in the beginning humans were born from animals of a different kind, since other animals quickly manage on their own, and humans alone require lengthy nursing. For this reason, they would not have survived if they had been like this from at the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's right. So here too, right, because of course the so-called uh, Hegel refers to them as the physical oh, yeah. philosophers, I mean the cosmologic uh, time of, uh, not uh, the beginning of philosophy, but there is also this uh, um, uh, moment that we find in Anaxman that then uh, this uh, uh, emphasis as well, this interest in, uh, in uh, Anaxman and Anaxman is in uh, human uh, things as well. And actually the, the second passage you read, 19, it's not only simply the question of, if you will, uh, evolution in an embryonic way, but also the, the, the importance of, uh, you know, the, the difference uh, of uh, the question of uh, 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 nursing, the lengthy uh, nursing that humans uh, require, rather than, uh, I mean, which becomes a very important issue in uh, philosophical anthropology as well, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. what it is to then uh, come to be. Humans, right, and certainly the, uh, the, the question of uh, a deficiency, right? I mean, uh, this uh, uh, the, the lack, right? This deficiency that uh, this uh, that, 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 that that is why there is this demand, this requirement for uh, greater care for uh, a longer time uh, in nursing uh, as well, because uh, otherwise even surviving would not be possible. I mean, the, the question of deficiency. Right, uh, which is uh, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, this calls into question through philosophical anthropology also the uh, specificity, right, uh, and the essential difference of what it is to be human. I mean, certainly there is a, a difference between uh, the human animal and uh, the other non human animals and the other forms of uh, life, right, but. Um, it is, uh, for example, Galen, uh, Arnold Galen, right? Uh, he speaks about this question of deficiency in, uh, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's the yes, I know. Of anthropology. Yeah, I haven't heard his name in years. So. <laughs> oh, really? But, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a great yeah, anthropologist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. a very uh, right. thoughtful, even though he had fascist proclivities. Right, so. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's <laughs> a very bright man, you know. Right, but it is, uh, it's an important... G-E-H-L-E-M, if anybody right. has Francis for glitter, he's yeah. very exactly <laughs> <Right. laughs> and, uh, and he writes about this, the progression <laughs> of uh, yes. the defeat, and right. then uh, also mm -hmm. the emergence, therefore, of mm -hmm. technology, as uh, mm -hmm. uh, one might say a necessary, you know? right. I mean, it's right. not because we are more uh, in fact, like the people usually say, you know, uh, you know, he's not taught at all. Huh? Anyway. Galen's not taught in any of the anthropology departments. 
but he's one of the most intelligent of, yeah, you know, figures yeah. of the 20th century right, right, right. in terms of this approach. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but it is precisely this mm -hmm. lack, this deficiency, mm -hmm. rather than uh, any claim to right, superiority right. that, right. Uh, if anything, defines right. uh, the human condition, right? So, I mean, I think that it's interesting that here, too, we see that uh, he, right, I mean, at least uh, the, this is what they say, Suko Pluther, about an axiom that the humans alone require, uh, right, uh, length, length, lengthy uh, nursing, okay? What about 15, what, others, huh? what about 15? Okay, yes. I like the oh. description of all the, the tube-like structures and the dark mist and all this. Yeah, it is. You, uh, maybe you, yeah. you want me to read it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you don't mind. The earth is aloft and is not supported by anything. It stays at rest because its distance from all things is equal. The earth's shape is curved round like a stone column. We walk on one of the surfaces and on the other one is set opposite. The stars come to be a circle of fire separated off from the fire in the cosmos and enclosed by dark mist. There are vents, certain tube-like passages which, uh, at which the stars appear. For this reason, uh, eclipses occur when the vents are blocked. The moon appears sometimes waxing, sometimes waning, as the passage or passages are blocked or open. The circle of sun is 27 times that of earth, and that of the moon 18 times, and the sun is highest, and the circles of the fixed stars are lowest. Winds occur when the finest vapors of dark mist are separated off and collected together, and then are set in motion. Rain results from the vapor arising from the earth under the influence of the sun. Lightning occurs whenever, whenever wind escapes and splits the clouds apart. Right. I mean, I guess it's just his description of yeah. the material world, I guess. Right, right, right exactly, which is a wonderful description, yes. And then like, the next one also, the thunder, lightning, and so on and so forth. But it's interesting now, like, uh, for instance, like this notion that they have dark matter, it's, it's mostly composed, you know, composed of space or something. Right. I mean, I don't know much about dark no, matter, but it sounds a lot like the dark mist, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, in reality, yes. Yeah, so that's what we find in Socratic philosophy very often, all these uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> strange, you know, if you will, anticipations of that configuration of things. Yes, that's right. And uh, maybe I, I want to put the name, you know, do you want to say more about No, I don't. I, mean, I just thought it was cool. The way no, they sure. Yeah, yeah. Where they anticipate all this stuff. Right? <laughs> just, just put yeah. the name on that, uh, right? Yeah, Arnold, 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 Arnold Galen. Yeah, 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 Arnold. All yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, just, just a good, a good German. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you mentioned also the big Four man. Four volumes on the uh, black. The big man? <laughs> yeah, someone mentioned the big man. Oh, yeah, last week I think we did talk about it. Yeah, Michael mentioned at one point, but I don't know if was the, the you mentioned the Big Bang at one point? Like, Vis-a-vis yeah, I think so. No? Yeah, maybe. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but he yeah, anticipates, the, the anticipates that. Yeah. 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 Who does? Maximander. Maximander, yeah. I, well, I have a different perspective. Uh, Good. Which is that there's some kind of memory, actually, of the knowledge that pre-existed these people. It's, a, it's an attempt to regather your knowledge that actually is lost. In writing, that, uh, these, that these things have been known uh -huh. prior, uh, maybe to the Greeks, but it's just that this was put into writing. In oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, so, so you're, are you presenting a material, uh, uh, a materialist uh, interpretation of, of uh, recollection that somehow that uh, the it recollection was, was already there yeah. in, in previous cultures, uh, not so much only in the yeah. in the soul. Yeah. It was a right. historical yeah. moment. Not so much of his internalization of the <laughs> soul as Plato would think it. No, I'm just wondering. I mean, you know, that's yeah. I mean, that, I mean yeah, yeah. A different concept of time, maybe than, yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it is. Uh, well, in Plato, it's eternal, I mean, uh, right? I mean, it's an eternity, right? Right. The theory of recollection is based oh, yeah, on, that's, that's on the, out of time. That's, that's an individual. Yeah. That's why I'm asking right, that, right, that the pre-existent knowledge was yeah. already right, there. Right, right, right. It's a priori. But I use the word pre-existent then yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. 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 But, but of course, I mean, because I mean, it's not that they made up this thing. Certainly there was a traditional thinking, even when we say, well, they is, is uh, not at the beginning of, uh, as far as we know, this tradition, but the, the first recorded, I mean, exactly. Right, and there were people 
uh, thinking uh, outside of uh, the uh, mythological or maybe more uh, uh, poetic way that pre existed as well. I mean, no, but I think it's, uh, yeah. it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a Derridian approach in some ways. What is what is in the uh, spaces, what is in the margins that's not written at this time, what is not part of the fragments, mm -hmm. what can we then, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, so what do you do to Derrida and not out there? Uh, well, I mean, Denny dies is, uh, at least in my opinion, is much more in terms of living on the edge of the philosophical systems, whereas Althusser is always reading the, the West as symptomatic of something, you know, I think that's like, very different. The problematic different. is what's not, what's not there, right? Not the there. Well, the, the absent is in both Althusser and in Danny Da, but yeah. the absent for Danny Da is really a, a taking place in, in the margins, mm -hmm. and one has to try to bring that back. I mean, you know, it's never, never a center, really, that you're going back towards in, in some ways, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're very, they're very close to each other yeah. in terms of the absent and, of course, absent cause. I mean, there's a tremendous, uh, you know, connections between mm -hmm. between the two. You know, uh, uh, yeah, in, in that way. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, Althusser never really went to the. Uh, for Althusser, Thales is the uh, beginning of of Western mathematics, and he opens up the continent. Of mathematics, right? And, yeah. and Plato becomes the philosopher to Thales. Mm -hmm. That's the first continent of philosophy for and Thales. Thales. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right? Sorry, Thales, he begins also the yeah, tradition in astronomy. The first astronomy. Yeah, first astronomy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's where the yeah, mathematics that's, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it's not yes. only in the principle right, of right. water or you know the right. Archer, You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but it is. Uh, yeah. So he's right. thinking con continents. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of. The, the history of philosophy, whereas Heidegger is thinking being as ascending, an right? apocal mm -hmm. view of being ascending. It's a very different okay. an ontology, you know, and the versus, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah. You mean Heidegger? Heidegger versus Althusser, if you will, yeah. if you want to start yeah. thinking yeah. about how how this, you know, these yeah, constructions uh, operate and, and right, right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's also the idea. I mean, uh, about to solve the problem with metaphysics that precisely leads nowhere, just like the Carl Sveger, right? Yes. That we spoke about uh, the title of a kind of uh, no, book that Carl Sveger right. is uh, right. paths that right. lead uh, nowhere. Lead nowhere, nowhere. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's the, the absence in metaphysics of mm -hmm. uh, an historical trajectory. Right, for, uh, right. So well, the non teleological, and he and I to go share that. Too. I uh, yeah, I mean, that's the title of a Heidegger's, one of Heidegger's book called Svege, which is uh, usually, we said the other day, translated as uh, Broken Path or... Uh, uh, off the Beaten off Track the beaten is the track. new translation. Also, off the Beaten Path. Also, paths, <laughs> <Right>. not that <laughs> there are those paths in the woods, but yes, they, they yes. lead nowhere. They lead nowhere. That's where yeah, the yeah, yeah. clearing happens. And yeah. You're reading <laughs> the bark of the tree. Does this give me an indication of where I am, you know, in, in the old proverbial? Can you see the forest from the trees? You can't. Right. <laughs> right. So, but in any case, I, I wanted to, or, I mean, I, I don't have to write these words, of course, put this bridge on the board, right? right. But <laughs> I, I wanted to emphasize again uh, the, uh, the importance of Neuma and uh, the, the, the fact that there are synonyms, right? Uh, uh, air, which is the right. Air and Neuma. Yeah. 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 That's right. They are, they are the same, right? So right. it is the breath. Which and that's that's again the okay, okay? and uh, again uh, it will uh, then become something like uh, also not close to news but thought and so on. Uh, we will see. So in any case, um, I don't know if we should read one more of the because actually uh, the, the the next part of the next passage uh, twenty four is almost uh, the same, very similar to twenty one. We can read it. So it's nice to hear, or right. we can move on. Should we read maybe another song? An Aximander? An Aximander. Oh, an Aximander, which yeah. one? Oh yeah, then uh, we went back to, I mean, we read those uh, oh, few passages by, yeah. uh, about an Aximander, now an Aximander, and then uh, we move on, uh, but um, I would say maybe mm, we can read uh, 24, which is similar to 21. How does it start? Because they have different numbers. Huh? 
What did it begin with? Oh. Yeah, they're different editions. So I no, think we all have. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, the stock has been changed. Uh, the editors. You've got to vote for us. You know, just to make you stupid. You know, so you can't continue. And yeah, it's the the things to yeah. cost more money. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's about. The I put the models. No, no, we write that. But fetishism with We write that. Yeah, yeah. But I is another one. This is 35 orbs. 35. Oh, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to order a desktop. Yeah, it's 35. The university. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I know. They really rip off the Canadians. It is 35. They consider the Canadians suckers. I want you to know this. They really do. I've checked the differences. I mean, I just, People just, call me yeah, up and you yeah. give me a copy of Negative Dialectics of Adorno. I found that I get twenty dollars cheaper in the States. Oh, I mean, no one wants it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> and then I'll be on to the Hegel um, section on Max Minus. Yeah. Oh, you want me to read this section first? There's also the Burnett. Uh, Passage oh, called. Oh, you had it. We're gonna go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the which passage yeah, called yeah, yeah. the world okay. breathes. Please, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, Who's, just as a uh, yeah, phrase, it's really nice. John that is nice. Oh, the yeah. yeah. uh, historian. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, because oh, I didn't yeah. bring it. Uh, yeah. Oh, you didn't bring it. No, no. just the section. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, we just talked about. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, just as there's all being. Like he says that they are synonyms also. They are synonyms. Okay. Only Greek. All right. That was good. <laughs> I have to rewrite things okay. this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, please, uh, Tony. Please. Sure. Um, so this argument, I guess, he's referring to the passage that starts just as... This is from school. early Greek philosophy, by the way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 48. All right. Uh, brings us to an important point in the theory, which is attested by the single fragment that has come down to us. And then he quotes, just as our soul being air, which we just read, mm -hmm. right? So do breath, uh, holds us together, so do breath and air encompass the whole world. The primary substance bears the same relation to the life of the world as to that of man. And that's Burnett speaking, right? Which is really nicely, I think, encapsulated in that right. the world breathes yes. uh, sentence. Now this was the Pythagorean view, and it is also an early instance right, see, of the Pythagoras. argument. But yes. is, it, is, it that, or is it on page 75? Because no, I, I of Burnett? Of it. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's different in the PDF, okay. but oh, okay. from the, yes, the motion from the microcosm to the macrocosm, and so marks the beginning of an interest in physiological matters, mm -hmm. which I thought was yeah. really interesting. Okay, so then now we move into yeah. the, uh, the next uh, sure. passage about uh, Anaximenes or Hegel, because then I know how much time we have. I want mm -hmm. to see something in the Hegel uh, section or some. Uh, okay. So um, the, the, he says um, precisely, right? I mean, things we already mentioned, but uh, I, I don't remember if we, if we saw this. Uh, page 189? No, Anaximenes, oh. right? The section by Hegel, right? In the Hegel uh, book on Anaximenes, in place of uh, the undetermined matter of uh, Anaximand. He brings forward, right? No, no, no. Oh. He's saying in, instead of uh, in place of uh, the undetermined matter of an axman versus Hegel, he an axminis, right, brings forward a definite natural element. Hence, the absolute is uh, in a real form, but instead of the water or Thales, the form is air. Uh, he found that for matter, but we we saw this. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I was going to read then uh, this, uh, you know, toward the end of this page, okay? When uh, he goes 46 when he's writing this. Not but uh, he, he's 46 years old when he's writing this history. Uh, hey, uh, hey, 45, 46 years old. The other day I noticed that he died, he was 59. No, no, 61. So how was he doing this? 61. Ah, okay. This yeah, was the lectures good. where they, uh, back then you, you just thought. Right. They took care of you. You didn't have to go out and hustle for a living. You know, this was he began a privat bosan for a uh, bosan. So where was he getting this history from, though? Just from reading it. Sources. No, he had many sources. No, he had six or seven major sources mm. that he used, and then he imagined 
in between, and you know, obviously had his own thinking about what dialectics was, and you know, right, right. and, and really gave his own, you know, a really dialectical hyphen historical approach or historical dialectical yeah. approach is mean, probably put better, or historical idealist, but. Yeah, yeah, because, because it's not always, simply like history again, yeah. about philosophy, but right. it is a, a, also an exposition of his own. It's an exposition of his own. It's not really a history of philosophy. Yeah. And he actually yeah, has a debate, as you know, with Cicero, who he considers a historian yeah. in a very banal way. Yeah, right. he's very much against Cicero's mm -hmm. approach, who he uses as a source, right. too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Very yes. much. So it's a, it's a very interesting, you know, where you have dialectics as both expository mm -hmm. as well as historical, yeah, yeah, then, uh, you know, um, accumulation I mean, of knowledge the, the, the and ideas. The, the yeah. use yeah. of uh, his main uh, right. uh, concepts and uh, the right. framework, like the notion right. of the dialectic itself right. Right. and the absolute determination and so on and so forth. Right. 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 This makes this a very special. And Heidegger idea. tries to rewrite this with the mm -hmm. concept of historicality and the, right. the concept of historicity in you know, being in time, the whole section there is really a, an argument or at least a, a beginning towards rewriting the history of philosophy through yeah. the history of being. You know, the, the antagonist is Hegel in many ways, right? Whereas then Althusser and Negre want to pick up the history of materialism as a subterranean movement Sub because, you know, as, as we know, Machiavelli, Spinoza, right. and, and, and Nietzsche, you know, and more, of course Marx. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting yeah, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, begin to yeah. think about the writing strategies and the, the, the conflicts and the series of oppositions yeah. that are really involved here. And Jaspers, who you mentioned, is in my opinion the most lucid of all of them. Mm -hmm. He's very good descriptively. Yeah. It's a very good introduction to the history of philosophy. If I was going to you know, recommend to read yeah. a history of philosophy, it would be Jaspers. Does and then, of course, Copelson is good too as a Jesuit, but it gives you, you know, Frederick Copelson as the oh, yeah, Jesuit yeah. is very good too in multiple volumes. But I think Jaspers is the best of the writers, oh, even yeah. though it's translated yeah. from the German. But another, I mean, I yeah. value in the, the history Julian of Marais, huh? Yes, I like Julian Marais a lot, yeah. Yeah, because Spanish. it's uh, yeah. Yeah. a concise yeah. value. <laughs> yeah. Some, yeah. So, and uh, the okay. treatment of the yeah. pre-Socratics is very good there right. too. And, uh, yeah. But don't you also get that to say yeah. something, right? Do you have that? No, just yeah. continuing with the soul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because oh, the soul... No, 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 no. Okay, yes. Is it? Yes. Yeah. That question of the well, soul, I, yeah, I no, thought maybe okay. you were looking for this <laughs> passage, <laughs> the, the one in the next yeah. paragraph, oh, yeah. just after that one. You mean in the Hegel? Yeah. Yeah. Where he mentions the Diogenes Laertius, right? No. He quotes the other. It was okay. the first gospel okay. in the history of philosophy. Okay, yeah, let me just, because I want to know what, yeah, yeah, yeah. what okay. everybody yeah. makes of this one. Uh, it's sort of in the middle of the very next paragraph. Mm -hmm. okay. um, or no, it's four lines down and up, so it's not really the middle. The next meaning shows very clearly the nature of his essence in the soul, and he thus points out what may be called the transition of natural philosophy into the philosophy of consciousness or the surrender of the objective form of principle. The nature of this principle has hitherto been determined in a manner which is foreign and negative to consciousness. Both its reality, water or air, and the infinite are a beyond to consciousness. But soul is the universal medium. It is a collection of conceptions which pass away and come forth while the unity and continuity never cease. But you know that I, yeah, really, but what you say, because I couldn't, Oh, you couldn't yeah. find it. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Oh, okay. Is he? Where is it? Maybe I'm just uh, hallucinating. Three. It's cool. Okay. I'm having I'm vision. Heidegger was too. In 1933. <laughs> Heidegger was so very hallucinating in 33. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Yeah. it's just the next paragraph. Yeah. Oh, you went to the next page. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, good, yes. Okay. Uh, no, this was helpful for me in sort of historicizing the movements mm -hmm. from one philosopher, mm -hmm. philosopher to the next. Yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. So, and you read this as our soul, which is there, right? Concept, yeah. which is the same as, uh, yes. Um, okay. And, and uh, here, too, actually, we see that, uh, right, this is again, uh, um, you, but you read, uh, starting from Anaximenes, right? The, the Jews, Jones, yeah. read again, uh, the uh, 
passage, the, the, the fragment. Oh, the a, I mean, it's our soul, which is air holds us together, right? The one right. spirit, pneuma, and they are together, likewise, hold the whole world together. Uh, spirit and there, which is mm -hmm. again pneuma and uh, uh, air and air, right? The spirit breath mm -hmm. and air is uh, there as a feeling. This is the fragment as we're repeated by Aetius, just as our soul being air holds us together and controls it, so do breath and air surround the whole cosmos. Is that what you're referring to, that that reportage of the fragment? Yeah. Right, but then, again, because then already in this section, Hegel says, now we go into Pythagoras, then he has a whole section into about the Pythagoreans, but already mm -hmm. in the section on uh, Anaximenes, mm -hmm. he said we're going to, and that, that's, that's what maybe we'll uh, briefly also speak about Pythagoras, the Pythagoreans uh, through Hegel, but also by looking at some of the fragments. But uh, he says, this is page 191, 191, we shall leave uh, this now and go to go on to Pythagoras, who mm -hmm. was uh, a contemporary of uh, Anaximand, uh, mm -hmm. and Xenophanes was also a contemporary, mm -hmm. so they come before Anaximenes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the continuity of the development of the principle of physical philosophy, which is uh, the previous philosophy, necessitated our taking Anaximenes uh, with him. Mm -hmm. We see that, as Aristotle said, he relies a lot on Aristotle as well. Uh, uh, they they place the first principle in a formal matter in air and water first, and then uh, if we may so define Anaximander's matter in an essence finer than water and coarser than air. I mean we are still there, but it's you know we see the fundamental point, and then Heraclitus, of whom we have to speak soon, will say fire. Okay, so then uh, we'll go. But he says ultimately. All these things are, uh, uh, right, I mean, this is where he speaks about poor abstraction, in a sense, uh, and, uh, you know, he goes back to this, uh, the, this is the very last uh, line, the bottom of page 191, the importance of these uh, poor abstract thoughts, and then uh, he says poor abstractions, okay, so he says them this way, lie uh, one, A, in uh, the comprehension of a universal, substance in everything, right, which is the object, we have been speaking about the underlying nature that we saw in uh, uh, with uh, dealing with Anaximenes, and B, in the fact that uh, it is formless and not encumbered by sensuous ideas, okay? And uh, then uh, he speaks about, uh, he, in the middle of this uh, page, the next paragraph toward the end of the, you know, the second half of the next uh, paragraph, if you see the word Aristotle, I mean uh, the name of Aristotle, mm -hmm. Aristotle, Aristotle maintains the incorporeal mm, uh, to be a form of things opposed to the material and, and uh, indicates that the absolute must not, not be determined in a one-sided manner because the principle of these philosophers is material only, they do not manifest the incorporeal side, nor is the object shown to be a um, notion, which again, uh, notion is a technical uh, concept in uh, Hegel, and uh, as I said before, it's like logos, right? At one point he will say that. It's interesting because he says uh, it is uh, then, uh, you know, there is something missing, right? In uh, like uh, this kind of uh, um, mm, uh, the dimension of thought, basically, right? Mm. Matter is indeed itself immaterial, as this reflection into consciousness, but such philosophers do not know what they express in an existence of consciousness. Thus, the first great defect here rests in the fact that the universal is uh, expressed in uh, a particular manner which is interesting in a particular form, which is interesting because, you know, that, that's the critique of Hegel. I mean, dealing with the question of the universe, right, I mean, this is uh, two particular, it's one-sided. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, he is continues speaking about this and uh, he goes into the question of uh, the cause, also the uh, efficient cause, what makes, uh, right, um, <clears throat> 
uh, when uh, he says, uh, how does it happen? This is, um, again, uh, uh, like seven, eight lines from the bottom of page mm -hmm. 192. How does it happen and what is the cause of it? For the fundamental substance, and he gives the Greek Eupo uh, Kemenon, right? That to Eupo Kemenon, which is a, a substance. The underlying, the sense, under underlying the substance, under not the substance itself. Right, right. It's the it's, underlying yeah, yeah, substance. Right, right. The Eupo yeah, yeah, Right, right, yeah, which yeah, is uh, yeah. also uh, could be understood as the subject. Right, right as the subject. Is the subject yeah. is that. Right, which is precisely becomes the foundation, as mm -hmm. Kyler maybe would say, which is thrown right. under as the ground. Substance, right. subject, right? Jack is to throw it, right? To right. be thrown, right. right? So, and he's saying that fundamental substance does not make this itself to change. Substance, by the way, from substance to subject. Huh? Yeah. I was just telling Josh in Hegel's preface mm -hmm. to the phenomenology, mm -hmm. the section on from substance to subject deals with this. Right. This is Hegel right. at work, right. one of his right. principal ideas, you know, in terms of, you know, the movement right. of, 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 as you say, substance, you know, in the underlying right. hypochemian that becomes the thrownness of the right. subject, you know, the, the, right. Right. the right. sub yeah. yeah. Right, and, and so, but, but the question here is, uh, what makes it change, right? I mean, right. the principle of change, which is, uh, interesting in many ways because it does also relate to the question of uh, the, the cause in the sense of the efficient cause right right uh, that uh, uh, and and also in marx uh, how you know ultimately the uh, label changes again uh, not uh, everything and uh, or acquiring heraclitus but he says just as neither that's that's wonderful i believe right what makes it change? Just as neither wood nor metal are themselves the cause of change, right? I mean, uh, the material itself is not going to change by itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the wood neither forms a bed nor does brass a statue, right? I mean, of course. Uh, but something else is the cause of the change, mm -hmm. right? This something else is precisely the efficient cause, right? Which is uh, uh, right, I mean, uh, in Aristotle, for example, it's one of the causes and uh, really what makes things, you know, what shapes. I mean, uh, to use the language also of uh, Hegel himself in the phenomenology of spirit, labor, I mean, even before going to Marx, labor, in the slave uh, master, slave dialectic, mm -hmm. the labor uh, shapes uh, the thing. It is labor that forms and shapes the thing. That's what I saw implied there. That's yeah. kind of what he's. Yeah. Or I mean. Why not contradiction? What's that? Why not contradiction instead of labor? Right, right. Also Same. contradiction. Yeah. As the. As the labor of the motion? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in, in Hegel, doesn't he put contradiction at the center of, of change? At least in Mao. Mao's reading of Hegel. <laughs> well, certainly in 1937. <laughs> in, the, in the hills of. Uh, <laughs> In the long march forward, but uh, yes, indeed. That we have by right then uh, yes, A that's become that the yeah. dialectical yeah. movement yeah. by A yeah. becomes not A, yeah. right? Yeah. And so through the movement, I mean, uh, everything moves through the contradiction yeah. precisely. Right. But the efficient cause, meaning mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. makes something change, for example, mm -hmm. precisely in uh, okay. the phenomenology, in that section of the phenomenology, he says it is labeled the shapes, the thing. Right. 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 This is this Label. is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Label, yeah. Work. Right. Yeah. This is how work. Work. Although the there's a distinction that's made, made that a creates a big debate between George Bataille and Poget, whether it should be translated work or labor. Or labor. Yeah. They have a big debate, a very long yeah. debate about this mm -hmm. uh, Poget and Bataille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But works refers not to wage labor? I mean, no, work as, as, a, as, a, as a, um, Alienated activity of labor is not the alienated nature of labor. No, not necessarily. I mean, that's uh, again, it's labor. an open question. The yeah, way people, right. I mean, it, it, they they are used in a loose way, but uh, the, the question is wage labor is the same type of, uh, but work is not necessarily that, that, that right. type of. Uh, 
and, and then this became another debate between Anna Arendt and a lot right. of people, the distinction between labor and work that she does in the human condition in the first yeah. sections right. of this. Uh, this but process. also the question yeah. of house and work, right? Which yeah. is not, yeah, I mean, that's a big It was the Negro people. Yeah, you're your people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, in What's any case, name? No, Maria just, de la Costa, uh, what was her name? Maria yeah, de la Costa, yes, the, yes. The, the, yes. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, 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 the yeah. 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 So, but in any case, I, I wanted, but also to go back just to, to the question uh -huh. of contradiction. I mean, I agree with you. It is the change is uh, that happens, because, and that he goes into the contradiction. But uh, again, I just wanted to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, re remind us of this uh, important moment, moment in uh, the, the precisely the mask so called master and straight dialogue, mm -hmm. where he says, you know, the slave the bondsman, precisely when uh, they realize that. Uh, uh, power uh, lies with them precisely because uh, they are in between uh, the, the master's desire and uh, its satisfaction, right? So they are completely independent of the thing because the thing in its independence, which is precisely the material itself, the wood, the metal, whatever, is left to the slave to work on, to work upon, right? So it is precisely then uh, through work that uh, the slave realizes that uh, you know something changes because work changes the thing shapes mm -hmm. the thing right yes mm -hmm. and, and so the master is dependent on it as well no? and that the master the master uh, that's right it also the master depends on it his recognition as master yeah. depends mm -hmm. upon this uh, mm -hmm. this process yes yeah, yeah precisely yeah. because yeah. otherwise yeah. the master will uh, be left with uh, 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 his, usually his desire and uh, unsatisfied. The other day right. I was speaking about this with my students as well, and I don't know why again to, as an example of that of a say, uh, in the tradition of family precisely, you said of the master, the, the husband, father, and so on, who wants to eat, you know, I mean, uh, if uh, he doesn't cook, does not how to cook, and wants to eat chicken, which is frozen, the chicken would be, uh, would stay frozen, right? I mean, to cook it, to prepare the meal, right, the chicken has to come out of uh, its independence, being frozen itself, right? So it is only in the traditional uh, family, precisely with the question of housework and so on, would be the woman, the women in the <laughs> house. The will, the father, uh, anyway. <laughs> will uh, no, I mean, uh, change, precisely shape the thing, right? I mean, uh, makes sense, no? And uh, then uh, the the desire can be satisfied. Uh, I mean, but any, but, but I think that this is this is the greatest moment in uh, in uh, the dialectic of uh, right in uh, the masculine and state dialectic. How the independence of the thing is uh, precisely appropriated by uh, the the party that seems to be powerless. But it is precisely in this appropriation, the, the power of the appropriation mm. changes everything. And this is uh, right there. Right. right. Well, I mean, what Hegel introduces here beyond the pre Socratics and, and what we're doing in Aristotle is, of mm. course, consciousness. Of yeah, this, yeah. This, this process. The you know, so that's the, that's the interesting yeah. that Wutstein, when it comes in, is a very you know, central, central moment, you know, how one interiorizes the master. How it's re interiorized, you know, etc. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that struggle the, the to the death the and death the risk that, that is taken or not taken yeah. by yeah. the slave, you know, the mm -hmm. risk. Yeah, and yes. that, that is one has to stay one's yeah. life, yeah. one's own life, precisely, yes. Um, so, but in any case, yeah, this is then it goes into the principle of motion that will become, of course, very important with uh, Renner later. With, uh, Heraclitus, uh, but here he already speaks about the question of becoming uh, on uh, the next page. Um, yes, but maybe we can, uh, you know, because again I, I want to go get into the next section, but uh, 
the end of this section on an axe minus 94 rather than 194 rather than 193. That's where he says at one point, that's the last four, uh, three, four lines. This transition to Pythagoras or the manifestation of the real side as the idea, idea is thought. Okay, if there is any importance also limited because it's critical also of uh, the theory of numbers and so on, but uh, it is already a prefiguration of that uh, dimension as well of the thought breaking free from uh, what is sentience. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, it is a separation between the intelligible and the real. I mean, uh, and with Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, certainly the question of number will become important. Uh, Hegel is critical of that because he sees numbers as, uh, I mean, he, he speaks of them, of, of uh, the concept of number, but very interesting ways, you know, very, I mean, he really believes that there is nothing in, uh, uh, there is nothing uh, that relates to life in numbers, right? I mean, that's, that's uh, but uh, certainly there is this element that, again, it's a prefiguration also of the ideas and uh, the forms in Plato, which uh, becomes interesting and the universal, therefore. Certainly there is uh, uh, this question, this dimension of a universality, which is part of uh, the, what uh, Pythagoras and the tradition of the Pythagoreans also is about in many ways. And actually one, uh, um, Fragment that I want to read, it's again not a fragment, but um, you know, passage about Pythagoras, which is famous actually in uh, this book. Now, I don't think in the previous edition it was laid out, but it is also attributed, it is also included in the section on Xenophanes. But otherwise, it is uh, about Pythagoras, right? Uh, found in uh, Diogenes. Uh, Laertius, the mm -hmm. lives of the philosophers, and uh, it is a uh, passage one in the section one in the section on uh, about Pythagoras. No? Oh yeah, yeah. It says it twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, Once he passed by, as a puppy was being beaten, <laughs> the story goes, mm -hmm. and in pity say these words: "Stop! Do not beat him." Since it is the soul of a man, a friend of mine, which I recognize when I hear a cry. Right. Which is, again, it's a wonderful uh, story. Nietzsche right? with a horse in Turin. Hmm? Yeah. Nietzsche breaking down with yeah, a horse yeah, in Turin. Very similar. Yes. So yes. that was just a repeat? Right. In some ways, you could think of that as eternal recurrence yeah. of the same uh, scene. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good movie, yeah, you know. I like it. From the uh, island to the uh, uh, to tourists. Yeah. No, no, I'm just no. making oh, the movie oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making the movie up. No. Yeah. When we but do the Nietzsche movie. When you do the Nietzsche, <laughs> the Nietzsche masterwork, yeah, yeah. The next, the next thing we're on our agenda. <laughs> so Nietzsche like, and jazz. Who's going to score that one, yeah. <laughs> so, but in any case, I mean, the few things that I want to say, because it's uh, interesting that, of course, this cannot be uh, uh, taken, you know, in its immediacy at face value, as one says, you know, be about precisely that question of the transmigration, right, metempsychosis, the transmigration of soul, mm -hmm. souls, and so on. Theology. And there is perhaps some of that. In <coughs> However, there is even more than that. It, it is, uh, uh, um, you know, a metaphor, if you will, about the concept of uh, the universal, right? I mean, uh, the pain of uh, the dog is mm. uh, the, the same as uh, any other type. I mean, the, uh, the pain of my friend is the same as the pain of the dog, and vice versa. Or maybe the dog is my right. friend. Right, well, so the new stuff on animal rights is really nothing new to the mind of the Pythagorean back. Oh, yeah. Based on this story. Really I mean, it's nothing Thank really you. new. It's yeah, a repetition of something about ghosts so back here. You know, all this stuff. Yeah, the occupation. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the sentient. Uh, right, precisely. So the idea is uh, yeah. that, that there is uh, that this uh, barrier, right, between, uh, you know, the human uh, 
form of life and the other forms of life is uh, made up and that, uh, you know, that pain is uh, universal, right? I mean, uh, the, again, uh, the, the cry, the crying pain, no suffering, the crying, you know, the, because he says, uh, I, you know, the voice, uh, I recognize, uh, you know, mm -hmm. when I call it crying. Crying is crying, right? I mean, basically that's, uh, mm -hmm. so I believe that this, uh, and there is something also, you know, in Hegel, I believe, in this sense, in terms of uh, interpretation, if I'm not mistaken, but we will see. But, um, so I, I just want to call attention to that. And then uh, there are maybe a few other things, especially the question of number, but I will call attention, then I will go into uh, some of the, 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 the things that Hegel says. That's actually, it's a, a long, uh, relatively long uh, section on uh, Pythagoreans, the Pythagoreans in general, not just Pythagoras, but he says, uh, this is page 25 of this section, uh, uh, passage 7, and I read just uh, some of it. Okay, the Egyptians were the first to declare this doctrine too, that the human soul is immortal, immortal, and each time the body perishes, it uh, enters uh, into another animal, as, uh, sorry, I, I misread. And uh, each time the body perishes, it enters into another animal as uh, it is born. And then the, this will happen 3,000, you know, in the course of 3,000 years, which is also, I mean, it's uh, not only um, about the relation between the Pythagoreans, uh, uh, and, uh, again, uh, the school, remember, the flourished, then as they say, in, uh, and then uh, they were exterminated at the end in Calabria, in southern Italy, but also the Buddhist, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yes. What's the 3,000 years? Do you, does anybody know? No. It still takes 3,000 years. Is that the, from the life of the faggot? I have a heterodotus. Oh, okay. Who, who is the, uh, who is the, uh, the uh, interpreter? Herodotus. The source? Oh, I didn't the source? Oh, Herodotus. Yeah, the historian. Oh, right. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that Christian coming. Herod, King Herod. I hear that, uh, I hear that, uh, that mishearing. If I make all attention to what Kegel says about this, I then we'll mm -hmm. go back to the beginning of right. the section on uh, the But this is on page 243 yeah. of uh, Hegel's right I mean, a section. Uh, I read this uh, little paragraph, okay, that um, he's speaking about, right, he said there is still something worthy of attention in what is said by the Pythagoreans in reference to the soul, and this is, uh, this is their doctrine of the transmigration of our souls. Cicero, as you mentioned before, I skipped this. Uh, uh, yeah, skip the okay? yeah. So the doctrine <laughs> of the transmigration, Hegel continues, right. of souls, extends even to India. And uh, without doubt, Pythagoras took it from uh, uh, the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Right, because it is unclear whether probably he, came, he ne never went really to India, but indeed uh, Herodotus expressly says so. Like Herodotus says mm -hmm. that he was in Egypt. So, after he speaks of the mythical ideas of the Egyptians as uh, to the lower world, he continues uh, and this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, that, that's what we were reading now. I mean, uh, right, uh, the, the same, uh, right, yeah, the Egyptians, precisely the fragment, uh, whatever, by Herodotus, uh, Herodotus, we write, okay? And uh, it is here that... Uh, yeah, Herodotus that is not says, in the old when, uh, it, Okay, let, I read this again, okay? The Egyptians were the first to say that the soul of man is immortal and uh, that when the body disappears, it goes into another living being, and when it has gone through all uh, the animals of land uh, and sea, and likewise birds, it again takes the body of a man, the period being completed in uh, precisely 3,000 years. Okay. Interesting, but certainly there is... Hmm? It actually continues, it says, some Greeks have adopted this doctrine. Some earlier, some later, as if it were particular to them and mine. Uh, you mean uh, in the, this is in the... Well, I, I yeah, and then it says... What's the date of the copyright on your edition? Yeah. 
2011. But then it says something else and she says, I know their names, but I do not ah, write them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, yes. Yeah. Cool, right? Not going to tell you. Yeah, no, 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 Remarks on that. He that. Yeah, he says that. I mean, right. the Herodotus says, uh, I know their name, but he means Pythagoras mm -hmm. and the Pythagoreans. So yeah. Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a traveler, no? He was, he was a, a kind of collecting, gathering, uh, or getting a lot of ideas from several places. I yeah. Think. yeah. Yes. yes. Traveler. So human and then is, 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 is that gathering of different yeah. ideas. No? It's right. And then uh, they, they're here and uh, they the school, right? It's, uh, we were saying, they, they say to in uh, precisely in uh, southern Italy, mm -hmm. for Arabia, they, they were attacked, attack, no? Mm -hmm. They were attacked. They, they were attacked. attacked. He, they died, were he died of starvation. They were asked, he died of starvation. Right. They, they were persecuted yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, yeah. then uh, uh, exterminated. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, many. Yeah, yeah. 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 Certainly, there was a yeah, which is yeah. <laughs> but what, so what? So what is the distinction? That this because Michael is going on about um, like music and stuff. Uh, so the oh, distinction between the, the number yeah. and 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 then because me too when I read it it sounded more like they were just some kind of yeah. Well, there were two, uh, two sets. Yeah. Sets, if you will, that developed yeah. acoustic. Quite, and, uh, quite the acoustic. Uh, it yeah, was the. Uh, uh, the uh, were, yeah. I just wanted to know more about it, about it, because Michael was saying it was more about me, like the separation was more about acoustics or music or something, a number. Or I thought it was more like uh, about a kind of a way of life. Yeah, and it was like a way number of too. The, but, it was but, the uh, esoteric and the exoteric uh, uh, yeah. mm. dimension, right? right. Sec, whereby some were admitted to uh, a deep, if you will. Yeah, it was an uh, initiation, an initiation, initiatory rites. Uh, into this which cult. is the esoteric, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. esoteric. So moral, yeah, outside, uh, right. external, uh, okay. and back to, right. yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. uh, and the number, cool. the number. It was a life, a kind yes. of a, a practice out of it. it how was it? I, I'm curious about it. Uh, it was a lifestyle. Yeah, they, they had a yeah. way of yeah. practicing. They didn't eat beans. Beans, for They example, didn't eat beans, right? and they distinguished between those who love wine and those who get drunk from it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's, that's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they that's didn't eat meat. Right. Right. No, no, no meat. meat. No meat. No, no meat. meat. They were vegan. Right. So, so the dressing too was, uh, you know, uniform yeah. in terms of uh, right. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, right, uh, he speaks about this as well. Mm. Right? Yeah. 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 There's, There's a great the book on this, Charles Kahn. K H N who I told you had yeah. written on the art and thought of yeah, Heraclitus exactly. also wrote a very good book on the Pythagorean tradition and Plato, the origin of the Pythagorean cosmology. But a very, very good book yeah, yeah. by Charles Kahn. I she, thought it was he, a, she may have been sent to yeah. Yeah. No, go on. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, I mean, if you're interested in following up. Yeah, I, I think I am. Just a little bibliographic mm -hmm. reference here. Yeah. So, <laughs> I thought it was, to the question of lifestyle, I thought it was interesting how Hegel, I think it was Hegel, maybe the other, um, distinguishes, he sort of shows how the, like, sort of more hierarchical, Mm -hmm. uh, initiation rites that, that Pythagoras sort of implemented were kind of at odds with the prevailing sort of view of Greek public life mm -hmm. at the time, right? Which mm -hmm. he speculates maybe had something to do with this uprising against mm -hmm. Pythagoras, mm -hmm. right? And against the mm -hmm. aristocrats, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, but in any case, to go back to the question, especially on numbers, yeah, because then uh, Hegel, uh, I mean, th there are some very interesting remarks on this question. If we, have the, uh, we don't have time? We don't have much time because, you know, oh, yeah. So maybe oh, then yeah. next time. Uh, uh, yeah. Look, because I mean, yeah. I, I, I wanted to at least read. Uh, yeah, go ahead uh, and do it. But, no, I mean, no, yeah, I mean, we can take a couple time. of minutes, but no, I don't want to. Next yeah. time, uh, yeah. a, a, a passage 17, uh, which is from. Uh, Aristotle's uh, metaphysics, uh, which is really the most important for us in the context of the Patricia Kerr, uh, you know, volume in relation to the question of numbers, right? Then uh, uh, Hegel repeats this as well, and also 16, 
which is really more technical about the numbers, but uh, Hegel explains that very well. 16? Hmm? 16? Yeah, maybe we'll do it next yeah. time. 16, he has, uh, 17, I mean, 18, basically, uh, she, she quotes uh, five times from the metaphysics, right? And once right. from the metaphysics. Yeah. 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 In fact, yeah, yeah. in fact, yeah. Uh, yeah. oh yeah, and uh, Hegel explains that. Well, but uh, basically 16, what Hegel uh, is doing, two, and then maybe we'll one, read two, this three, next four, time, yeah. Yeah. and then we'll go back to this, and then Xenophanes, and move on. Xenophanes, and then I I just want the question on number that uh, Hegel right, it says, you know, that uh, it is almost like uh, what he says in another context, maybe a bad uh, infinite, right? I mean, in the, it's a repetition of, uh, I mean, you had the one and all the other numbers are simply thoughtless, one might say, notionless, right. their notion, a repetition yeah. of the same one, right? So one gets into the concept of civility then, right? Mm -hmm. And so he mm -hmm. opposes that. But the question of uh, the, the way in which there is this combination, for example, because they have uh, the one, the two, and then uh, the three, which is a more uh, perfect number, the four, and the ten, uh, apparently, like that's a technical thing right. that they, is the well, most Like Plato's uh, theory perfect. of numbers, you only need four numbers. Right, but one, two, it's three, interesting four, because uh, the tetractus yeah. is that ten, ten contains all of them. Ten contains one, two, three, and four. Why well, one, two, and three <laughs> is uh, right? Uh, what one, two? Uh, one, <laughs> six. One, two, three is six, and then four is ten. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the tetractus whereby mm -hmm. that makes this the most perfect number because it contains the one, right. the two, and the three, and this makes right. It adds up to six, and then the four, mm -hmm. and this adds up to ten. Do you ever well, meet uh, Victoria Hussler? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Did you ever read Victoria Husserl, who was Italian and German? He wrote a very good uh, essay on Plato's theory of numbers based on this. Victorio Husserl. He teaches at Notre Dame. He's, uh, he's Italian and German. A total madman. But anyway, but very good. I mean, you know, kind of like the Nazi experiment gone right. But the question of music then relates to number, because yeah. music can be, and then, but they say that everything can be uh, understood in terms of the number, really becomes almost like a, 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 a material. Uh, um, uh, reality itself, because everything is made of numbers, ultimately, in a, almost a real sense, and uh, although it's this universal thing. And then uh, another thing that he says as well is that, uh, you know, I mean, he goes, it's very nice the way in which one is the point, and uh, two is the line, uh, three is the surface, and four is uh, yeah. the uh, the geometric, the, the, the yeah. geometric figure, right? The, the, the angle. angle. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I don't this know. is why then yeah. ten becomes the most perfect because right. it is uh, almost a. Uh, it, 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 it gives the the, 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 the the meaning, if you will, the picture of uh, reality as a whole. I mean, it's a way of speaking about reality. So maybe then we we'll go back to this uh, next time before okay. we continue on. There's no race. Oh. So you said, uh, are you going to send out an email that we should read or? Oh, maybe I should. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. My 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 email. Oh, because I, I got an email. I have.